All right, calculus students, let's get you some help on these test prep questions. This first one is just dealing with finding the derivative slope, excuse me, the derivative graph. So this is the function f of x, and we want to see which one of these things is representative of the derivative. So that means we're looking at the slope. So here we have a slope that's negative, 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 and it's still negative, but you can see that it's it's not quite as negative as it was up here, right? It's like it's starting to barely smooth out, but not much. Then all of a sudden, this, there is no derivative. The derivative does not exist, so I'm going to put D and E to remind myself that. Uh, then we go positive, positive, zero, negative, 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 does not exist again, and then we go positive, 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 positive. So we want a graph that is going to be negative y values, no derivative, positive, zero, negative. Okay, so let's think about that. We're going to be, well, let's look at this one first. We're going to be in the, underneath the x-axis down here, but right here it would have to be positive. So we would need to be above in this quadrant, somewhere up here. Okay, so that's not working right for this prop, this one, so I know it's not that. Uh, this one has to start negative, and this is starting with positive y values, so it's not that one. This one is, again is starting with positive y values, can't be that one because it, it has to start with negative. So both b and e start with negative values. Uh, and then what? We're going to be negative, negative, negative. But now look at this one. See how it's getting really, really close to zero, but then it stops right there? This graph does not flatten out. It would have to go like this and flatten out and almost get to zero and then stop. Whoops. And do something else. Okay, that graph is not doing that. That's why it's not this one. It also, let me show you something else here. Uh, this is positive. And so it would have to be a positive y value. It have to be up here. So this fits the this fits all the descriptions. We have negative to match this part. Then we go positive to zero. So here is positive y values to zero y values. Then negative y values, which is this strip right here. And then it jumps and is positive again. Up here, these y values are positive. Okay, so that's why the answer is B for this. Number two. Let me start off by showing you uh, which ones they're not, because then I think it'll make more sense when I get to the correct answer. So horizontal tangent, remember horizontal tangent of f, we're talking about f, is when you have uh, the derivative equaling 0. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of this. Remember, this is x to the 1 third. So the derivative, f prime of x, would equal 1 third x to the negative 2 two thirds. So now let's simplify that and that becomes 1 over 3 and then it is the cube root of x squared. Okay, so there's our derivative. So we're going to have a horizontal tangent if the derivative is 0. Is there any way for this derivative to ever equal 0? No, because you have a 1 on top. There's no variable x up here. There's no way a numerator can be 0. So it cannot have a horizontal tangent. So if it can't have A, it automatically can't be D either because it says both A and C. So we're down to that. All right, now uh, I'm going to skip B. I'll come to that one last because that's actually the right answer. Let's go to C. Uh, the slope of the tangent to the curve is increasing on the interval negative 1 to 1. The slope is increasing. In order for the slope to be increasing, you need its derivative to be positive. Well, that would mean, okay, this is slope. Okay, the derivative is slope. We want its derivative to be positive. So we would need this to be positive. So if the slope is increasing, slope's derivative would be positive. So we'd have to take the derivative of this again. And when you take the derivative, let me come down here, the derivative of this for the second derivative. So come down here. That negative comes to the front. We're going to get a negative 2 ninths x to the negative 3 5 thirds. But there, this right here is obviously negative. If we tried to plug in both negative values between uh, that are negative or positive values, sometimes you're going to spit out a negative answer. So that is not it either. Okay, so now that leaves us, oh, and if it's not that one, it can't be this C, so it's not there. All right, so that leaves us with why is B the answer? This tangent, vertical tangent, we know that if x equals 0, the graph actually exists. There is a graph there. You can plug in 0, and you get 0. 
But if you plug it into the derivative, if you plug in a zero right there into the bottom of this thing, you're going to get one over zero. Therefore, there is, it, we're dividing by zero. You can't do that. We have some weird thing going on with the slope. When you are doing one divided by zero for the slope, that's the situation where we're going to have a vertical tangent. Okay, so yes, it says consider the graph. I should have started off with this. It says consider the graph, but you're not actually graphing it. You're just thinking about what would be happening to the graph based on only knowing what the function is. All right, let's find an absolute maximum on an interval. Here's how we do this. When we want the highest point on an interval, you have to plug in, whoops, I did that wrong. You have to plug in the endpoints. Let's figure out what that equals. And then the, where it ends, the other endpoint. And then we're going to plug in any critical points we might have. So I'll, I'll just put one for now, and then we'll see if we have more critical points. So negative 1. Let's plug that in. So we get 2 times negative 1 squared minus, now let's say plus 7 minus 10. That all equals negative 1. Okay, so there's the y value. Now let's plug in a 3. So 2 times 3 squared is going to be 9. Uh, minus 7 times 3 is 21. Minus 10. And then that's all going to equal negative 13. And okay, so look at this. We have a negative 13. That's an answer. So we have a negative 1. That's an answer. But look, this says absolute maximum. Okay, so so far our answer would be negative 1. There's no way it's negative 13. Okay, so I know it's not that one because this is higher than this one. Now we need to check the critical points because the critical points are where we have possible candidates of max and mins. So what is the critical point? That's where we take the derivative. So let's figure out what the derivative is. The derivative of f is 4x minus 7. We set that thing equal to 0 and solve. You end up with x equals 7 fourths. Oh, and look, there's a 7 fourths right here. Don't be tricked by that. 7 fourths is just the critical point. It's the x value. It's what you plug in. It is not a max and min. It's not the y value. So now we have to plug in 7 fourths, and we're going to go 2 times 7 fourths squared minus 7 times 7 fourths minus 10 equals. Okay, so then you have to figure out if this, which one is going to be higher. Is this answer larger than negative 1 or smaller than negative 1? Whichever one is higher, that will be your answer. Okay, so this number right here, or this number is your answer. You just have to simplify that, and that's how you know which one is which. Excuse me, which one is the maximum. Number four is kind of an interesting one. They give us here the derivative. They're telling us the derivative is x squared minus 9 times g of x. We don't know what g of x is, but we know that it's always less than 0. So we know this thing right here is always going to spit out a negative number. So if we're talking about where max and mins are, or at where any extrema are, that's dealing with finding critical points so, or where the derivative does not exist. So if this is the derivative, there's nowhere this doesn't exist. So how about we figure out when does it equal 0? g of x will never equal 0. It's always less than 0. So we don't have to worry about that. So let's take x squared minus 9 and figure out when that equals 0. That factors or you just solve it, you're going to get x equals a plus or minus 3 three when you solve that thing. Okay, so negative three and three are our critical points. So do we have a max or do we have a min? Let's make a quick little table. Now my table might be a little bit different than what Bruss does, so I hopefully I don't confuse you, but this is how I do that. Oh, that was awful. So this is how I do this. I'm going to go negative three and three. These are going to be my x values. Down here is going to be my f prime, right? Yeah, f prime of x. Okay, so I've got my negative 3, my positive 3, and I know the derivative is 0 there, and the derivative is 0 there. Okay, so now let's just choose a number in between these. What's a number in between negative 3 and 3 that's really simple to do? 0. Okay, so if I plug in a 0 here, oh, into the original. If I plug in a 0, I get a negative number times another negative number. This is positive. This, remember, this g of x is always negative. Okay, so now let's plug in a number that's smaller than this. How about negative 5 or negative 1,000? It doesn't really matter. It could be anything. Uh, if you square it and then subtract 9, this is going to be positive right here. So you have positive and a negative 
will give you a negative number. That's all we needed to know is that it was negative. We don't care what the actual number is. Uh, and then let's put in another number that's bigger than 3. How about 1,000? Because it just needs to be anything bigger than 3. 1,000 squared minus 9 is also positive. Positive times a negative is a negative. Okay, so what do we have going on here? We have, uh, since f prime is negative, that means we are decreasing, then we're at 0, then we're increasing, then we're at 0, and then we're decreasing. Okay, so that's the negative. So you can see here this represents a minimum. This negative 3 is a minimum. And x equals 3, x goes up and then down. That's a maximum. So that's how we know which one was that one? B. Yep, max at 3. There we go. Okay, last problem. We're coming up with an equation of a line. Let's remember some things we need. We need y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. So what we have first is we have an x value. So I'm going to go y minus, I don't know what the y1 is yet. I don't know what the slope is yet. But I know that it's x minus 0. I know that because x is 0. So we just need m to go here and the y1 to go here. So you take the 0, plug the 0 in there, plug the 0 in there. That will give you your y1. Then how do you get the m? Remember that m is basically y prime. That's what m is. So you take the derivative, y prime equals 3 minus, what's the derivative of cosine? A negative sine x. So that means that y prime equals 3 plus sine x. Okay, so now you plug in a 0, plug in a 0 here, and that's what your m is. Once you have that all set up, you can just solve for y and you get your answer. All right, hopefully that was helpful, and uh, good luck on that master check.